That's my dad. He's called, he was called Taffy the Window Cleaner. He cleaned windows around here for over 35 years. So if any of you are from this area, you'll, you'll have probably knew him. He, he did all the terraced houses from here right down to Spittal Hill, the shops on Spittal Hill, etc. But he always knew he was a clever bloke. He didn't really want to be a window cleaner. When he was at school in North Wales, he knew that or he thought he was as clever as a bloke, a, a lad that went on to be a doctor. So he always had it in his head that he should have been a doctor, but he had to leave school at 14 because his family was too poor. And he ended up coming to Sheffield and uh, window cleaning, but he, he really wanted one, us to do well, to do better than he'd done. So he, he had seven kids, and he worked really hard to get us all at university. Four, four of us did actually get to university, uh, so that's quite epic, really. Before he died, he did tell me that he was um, proud that he'd managed to drink and smoke for 65 years. And no seriously, and nothing had finished him off. And we reckon it's because the window cleaning kept him so fit. <laughs> Meanwhile, my mum, the long-suffering, she had the seven kids. And she, she also wanted something better for us. She didn't really want to be married to a window cleaner. So when we were going to school, we were, we were picking up the local dialect, bringing it home, but she didn't like us speaking it. So we weren't allowed to talk it. But me and me two younger brothers rebelled against that and carried on talking it. So that, that's where it comes from. So as far as I'm concerned, Sheffield dialect, it's a really old language, and there's no wrong with it. So I'm going to go through a little bit about different words and stuff. Dialect is usually about different words that are used, but it's, um, it's also about accent as well. So, you know, things like class, grass, brass. You, you won't get me saying the longer versions of those words ever. But it's um, also words like words that end in or, like door, floor, uh, I said ua, dua, things like that. So if you're actually from Pittsmore, you pronounce it Pittsmore, not Pittsmore, Pittsmore. So uh, the, another word that we use a lot is uh, an owl sound is always ah. Oh, so if I can get it right, so now house out is is na ass out. So we did used to wind my mother up by saying let's get out and ass, just to be a little bit mean. And the other, the other um, common use of, um, of language is we don't really use the word the. And if you see, there's a, a sketch by Michael McIntyre that's really funny. And he takes the mick out of Yorkshire people for not using the word the. But he, he kind of says it wrong. The way that we say it is you don't really pronounce the ter at all. You add it to the, the word before. So if I, if I was to say, get in the bath, you don't actually say that. You say, get in bath. So it becomes shorter. Um, you know, back of the net becomes back at net. So everything gets condensed. It's a much more succinct way to talk. Now, um, in dialect, when I first saw the word it written down, I knew exactly what it meant. It meant it. But what it actually stands for is give it to me. It's the short ver version of saying give it to me. And it's, again, it's just kind of like condensed. Likewise, gior, which obviously makes you sound like a donkey, is actually, it's just short for give over, stop it. So usually people do say it like, gyo, gyo na. Um, I'll see there. Now, to be fair, I don't, I don't say that, but I do know people that do say I'll see there, and obviously it means I'll see you. And I is often said as a ah. Um, so, and I like it that we still say that. We still say I'll see you later. It's kind of, it's, it's still around, but it's I'll see there. Rate is uh, right. I mean, I spell it right, but uh, right. It's also like uh, night becomes Nate, fight is fate, so it's fight night becomes fate night. But also, um, people pronounce n n night neat <laughs> as neat. So we'll say, are oh, they going to neat? And I don't know where that's come from, but uh, we say that as well. Uh, words instead of you, so there's, 
in thy, this then. That is really ancient. Now, I've been saying the word thus for years, which means you have, and uh, I didn't realize all this time until I was doing this talk, it's, a, it's actually short for thou hast. So it's a shortened version of thou hast, so it's, it's really quite ancient. Uh, likewise, the thou, your, your is actually a pure version of the word you, which we've actually, we've lost in modern English, but it's still uh, a part of old Sheffield language. Um, and also, what isn't on there is the word mester. The word mester, the first recorded time it was, um, was it came from 1200. The word mister didn't come through for another 200 years. So it's kind of like, you know, the little mesters is quite an ancient thing. Um, another phrase we can have, if we can have the other slide up, is oak for no. Now, everybody knows, you know, folks always want oak for no and it means anything for nothing. Now, I could understand no coming from naught, you know, the, the uh, background to that is, is naught, but all out, out, <laughs> oats, is, it comes from a word ought with an A, so it's like naught without the N in front. That's an old word in itself, but oat for no is our ver version of saying that. And the other thing, um, about that, I've never really heard anybody outside of Sheffield pronounce it like we do properly, oat for naught. They usually pronounce it out for naught to rhyme with trout. But that really gets up my nerves. <laughs> um, the other thing is we, we tend to shorten words, words, words that have got two or three syllables. Um, we just shorten them. So isn't it becomes in it, doesn't it becomes done it. Uh, wouldn't it is wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? No, it's won it. It's won it. All of that lot. Shun is shouldn't, and couldn't is the C word. <laughs> it is. So I couldn't say it because it's a swear word, but I can say it because it's not a swear word in context, in the right context. It's right. So anyway, um, getting on to my favourite C word is chuff. Um, that basically means you're a bit of a big head. Uh, if they're in the room, it's about them. It's, their opinions are the most important ones. Everybody knows a chuff. Now, to be fair, it tends to refer to men. I'm sorry about that. I think if you're a female chuff, you're, you're a bit of a cow. But it's, um, you know, it's just how it is. Um, chuffed, however, means very pleased. And we think that comes from sh the French chauff, which means uh, to warm, to be warmer. Um, apparently a chauffeur comes from uh, the person, not a driver, but the person that actually warms the seat before everybody gets in the carriage. So, and likewise, um, there's chuffing. You, you basically use it instead of the F word, so it's chuffing now. Chuffing now, what's happened there? So, chuff is a very um, versatile word, and I do use it probably more than I should, actually. So I think, just to finish, I just think that the language is, is very old. It's at least 800 years old. And I'm proud that I can speak it, uh, usually to somebody you know, when, when they're speaking it as well. But it is a language, and it binds us together in hardship, in defiance, uh, in pride, and humor, because we like having a laugh about it. So I'll leave it there, thank you.